I want to give a very special welcome to Charmaine. Charmaine and I worked together this year. Charmaine came to my April masterclass, which was the very first one that I did. And since then, she has gone on to do great things. And I've invited her here tonight because I want her to share her story with you. This is my mission. I want to empower aspiring leaders to become leaders, to work in schools that are going to shape the future of education, that are going to change the life chances for children across the country for the better. And to do that, schools need great leaders. Oh, nice to see you. We haven't seen each other for a little while. Okay. I'm agreeing to do this because I know that the people on this masterclass are going to relate to what you say because you were in a very similar position to them not so long ago back in April and I really think that by you sharing your story people will be able to be inspired so shall we start at the beginning and way back in April when we first kind of started getting to know each other can you say a little bit about where you were what you were doing why you decided to join the master's class so I joined the masterclass because at the time I was a vice principal at a school in a large federation and I was covering maternity. So I knew that the end of the year was coming fast and I thought it was important as I was starting to apply for jobs that I was arming myself with the best opportunity that I could. And I'd been following Sharon on LinkedIn and just really felt quite drawn to what I thought I could achieve if I, if I signed up. And it meant I was going to get the opportunity to work with other people that were really like-minded, wanted to become leaders. I wanted to find a permanent job, but also develop myself as a leader in a primary school. So Masterclass just came along at the right time. And yeah, I, I jumped both feet in straight away. You did indeed. The most you get out of it is what you put in. So the people that were really successful, there was lots of other people apart from you that went on to do great things after that masterclass and the September masterclass I can see that it's the people who put the effort in the people that turn up to the lives who do the homework who do the tasks those are the people who really go on to do great things so what would you say was the biggest benefit just from doing the the masterclass back in April what was the one thing that you think you got out of it it was understanding what I wanted my vision to be so that when I was asked an interview, what did I see myself being as a leader? What can I bring to the role? Having my impact statement was really important. So I went, I had two interviews, one that I came really close to getting and one that I then actually did get. It was the impact statement and knowing what I wanted to see myself as in terms of being a leader in the future. I was really clear on that. And that's what I think really came across in the interview. So I think from the whole of the masterclass, it was actually, I think at some point when you're applying for jobs, you're kind of just going through the motions you go through the job spec you go through the person spec yep I've done that yeah I know that but actually it's just a box ticking exercise to actually unpick all of those things and put them together and actually work out right this is what I want to look like as a leader I'm going to use this I'm going to use that and put it all together and make myself unique and have like a great selling point and be able to sell myself well and confidently in the interview was what I think those two things gave me. Wonderful. And then obviously, after we did the masterclass together, we decided to work together a bit further on your application and your interview technique. Do you want to say a little bit about that? How did that help you? Yeah, so Sharon will know that I started going for, into, I started applying for jobs every which way, the left, right and centre, up and down, round the corner. I was looking for jobs everywhere and I just wasn't getting shortlisted. So I started to question myself, thinking, well, why don't they want me? I can tick all of that person's spec. I can tick all of that. Why am I not getting shortlisted? And then one head teacher of a job that I thought he was going to shortlist me for explained that it was my application form that was the problem. So then I contacted Sharon and said, like, I'm having problems with my application form. I think I'm going to need the help to do the application form. And then suddenly I did the application post that did the application prep with Sharon and got three got shortlisted for three jobs um all within was it was like within the same week weren't they three yeah. jobs in the same week yeah. so I was just like okay but then it was like okay well I've done the application form but now I don't want to risk not getting one of these jobs so then we did interview prep and that was amazing so just worked my way through how I was going to come across we did videos together 
Sharon was talking to me on the day of my interviews via WhatsApp and yeah, it was just, it was just really, really helpful. And then I didn't get one of the jobs, but I wasn't too, too upset about that one, was I? Because I knew that I'd got that close. So I knew it wasn't me. Someone else was just better. That's fine. But then I knew that the next interview I went for, there wasn't no way I wasn't going to get that job because I knew how I was selling myself. I knew that for someone else to come along now and get it, they'd have to be like 1000 times better than me. And there wasn't anybody that was. Do you want to say a little bit about how your confidence changed? Because I remember when you went for that interview and you didn't get it and you were beating yourself up about it. You said, oh, I don't know if I want to apply for any more. And you felt like time was running out for you because you had the very time, kind of tight time frame that you had to be in a job by. So just talk about maybe how your confidence shifted in that kind of very short period of time. I think you messaged me on the day of that interview that I didn't get, didn't you? And I said, I don't want to talk. <laughs> and you're like, that's fine. I'll speak to you tomorrow. And I think what happened is I then went back through all the things that I learned at the masterclass, went through all the notes that I'd taken, all the different tasks that I'd done that we were able to save and download. And I just knew that I was a good candidate. So it wasn't, I knew I had all the experience that was necessary. All I had to do was make sure I was selling myself properly and answering the questions correctly. And sometimes you think you know the answer, but actually what you need to know is what they are going to be wanting to hear from you. And that's what Sharon helped me to understand that, yes, they're answering that question. I can answer it. But actually, if I answer it this way, that's going to tip me over someone else who's answering these questions, because it's just taking you that little bit more in depth and to look at different angles of the question so that you can answer them, answer them well. So my confidence grew because after that, I watched through the video. Sharon recorded it, sent it to me and I watched through the video, literally memorised it, literally memorised the video like word for word so that when I came to the interview I was just reeling it off by second nature so I did feel confident going into that last interview and I had two days before the cutoff for the resignation date but I still felt quite confident going into that one. Fabulous and how Charmaine would you describe your life now how has your life changed since if you compare your life to April to now has your life changed tell us a little bit about the role that you're doing now how things are different for you. So now I'm a vice principal within the same federation, but at a different school. And I'm able to now, because it's not a maternity cover, but it's permanent role. I can actually make my own mark as a leader. And the head teacher that I work for is really good at supporting that. So I'm really full on. It's really full on. I'm not going to say that it's easy because it's not. But I'm able to, to mould myself into the lead that I want to be. And my head teacher is really supportive. She's just, I've just started my MPQSL now. So I'm working towards that and just trying to develop myself as a leader. And how I feel now is I, now that I can relax into my role, I'll be ready for the next step up. I'll contact you again, Sharon, don't worry about that. But now that I know what I want to be as a leader, I know exactly what things I need to do and I'm able to take my time. But I know that when I come to take that next step to go up the scale, go to become head teacher, what I want to do because I've put all these things in place beforehand. Yeah, thank you. It was such a pleasure working with you it really was and it's so lovely to see how far you've come like the journey that you've been on like where you were when you started where you are now the fact that now you're having all this great influence as a vice principal the fact that you're already thinking about how you can then step up to be head teacher and as you said all the great preparation that you did for your vice principal job is going to stand you in good stead for whatever role you take on next um my last question to you is what advice would you give to the people in this masterclass who are perhaps in a very similar position to how you were in April? I think for those of you who may be looking for a job and it's not come along and you're trying to work out what might not be working, it's just like going back and picking what you want to be as a leader because that's what they're going to, that's what potential employers are going to be looking for. They're not looking for you to tick boxes and say, yeah, I can do this, I can do that. But actually you've got to stand apart from other candidates so just really work on your impact statement and not just again with that really make sure you're speaking from the heart so that they can actually say right do you know what I can see what Charmaine wants yeah she really wants to be like this and does that fit in well with the school that I that I'm applying for I think that was the key wasn't it that we talked about if you go to a school and you think yeah that's the role I want but actually I'm not sure if that's the school I want to work in it's really important to, to make sure that the school you're looking for lines up with your visions lines up with your work ethic what lines up with what you want to see happening in SLT because obviously in SLT you're working with those people really closely 
so you have to know that they're kind of singing from the same page as you and it just really will not work and you'll be unhappy and for those who are just go through the application process obviously you're working with Sharon already so that's going to be great a great help I think with the application process and the interview process again just yeah know know yourself inside out I think that's the, that's the key like now I know what I want to be as a leader how I want to be as a leader and I know what I have to offer so I go into I would go into another interview feeling confident that for some like I said before for someone to get it over me they'd have to be really superb now <laughs> I love that. I really do. I love the fact that you have nailed it on the head, really. It's about knowing yourself. And by knowing yourself, that gives you the confidence to be able to walk into an interview and just know that it's the right school for you. You're the right candidate for the job. And it's a perfect match. So thank you. Really, thank you so much. I hope that's inspired other people. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Charmaine. So, so no lovely to see you and hopefully we'll catch up again soon thank you so much yeah, for doing it bye bye